When major infrastructure like Cloudflare goes down, so do many third-party services relying on Cloudflare, including NetBird's own hosted solution. Anyone who was self-hosting NetBird saw no impact on their ability to connect to their devices. That's why today we're showing you how to self-host NetBird. NetBird is a powerful open source VPN solution based on WireGuard. By deploying your own management server, this setup ensures that even during an outage, your private network remains fully operational, allowing you to access all your devices without interruption. In this video, we'll walk you through the complete installation and setup guide for self-hosting NetBird. If you're ready for truly resilient networking solution, stay with us and let's begin. All you really need to get started is a Linux server, such as a VPS. We're going to get one built for ourselves and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Now that we have our server built, we're going to go to the official NetBird website and click docs at the top right. Scroll down until you see a self-host NetBird. We're just going to follow the quick start guide for this tutorial, but if you guys need to do more configuration and more manual things, make sure you guys go check out the advanced guide and they show a lot more how to do things step by step in that guide. So we're going to be using the quick self hosting guide with Zitadel. That is uh, Zitadel is an identity provider, so that helps with the login and the user management. So if we scroll down, the infrastructure requirements for NetBird is a Linux VM with at least one CPU and two gigabytes of memory. We, went, we, we do have that. We actually have a little bit more for this tutorial. And the VM should be publicly accessible on these TCP ports, port 80, 443, 33073, and 10,000, and 33080, and UDP ports 3478, 49152 to 65535. You should also have a public domain pointing to the VM. We have Kugatsu CC. That is what we're going to use to point to our NetBird management web UI. So if we scroll down a little bit more, you need to have Docker installed on the VM with Docker Compose plugin. So we will show you how to install Docker. It's very easy to do. You will also need a JQ installed. This should be available in all official repositories. We're using Ubuntu, and I do know for a fact that it is available. So I'll show you guys how to install that. And you will need curl installed. So we're going to scroll down where it says download and run the script. They pretty much set this up very easily for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, we're going to need to install Docker and JQ. Let's go ahead and do that by going to the official Docker install docs for Ubuntu. The link to this will be in the description below. So let's go ahead and scroll down to where we see setting up Docker repository. Let's go ahead and click that and go to our terminal. Let's paste that in, and let that finish. Once that is done, let's go back to our browser, scroll down until we see the install command for all the Docker packages. Paste that, should ask us if we want to continue. Let's press Y on our keyboard and press enter and let that complete as well. Once that is done, we will need to install JQ. So let's do a sudo space apt space install space JQ and press enter. It'll find that. So let's press Y on our keyboard and then enter one last time. And now we have JQ and Docker installed, so we should meet all the prereqs. Let's go back to the self-hosting guide and see what we need to do next. So the next thing we need to do is download and run this script. So let's go ahead and copy, paste that in. Let's go to the beginning and we're going to change our NetBird domain to netbird.kugatsu.cc. Now, make sure you guys already have your domain pointing to netbird.kugatsu.cc, or this might fail during its first official run. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we will run this command together. Okay, we have went ahead and set our domain to point to this IP with the A record of netbird.kugatsu.cc. So let's go ahead and press enter, and let's hope that the DNS record already propagated and we should see no issues. So let's go ahead and press enter. Okay, I went ahead and copied it one more time from the website, and we're gonna try this one more time. I don't think anything's wrong with it. I just think I may have copied it wrong. So let's go ahead and try that now. Yep, I just copied the command wrong. So make sure you guys copy the command correctly, and then it should run just fine. So it's gonna go ahead and pull the container and then start everything, and let's just wait for that to finish. Okay, our installation is done. Our Docker containers are up. We should get a completed message, which we did, so we can access our NetBird dashboard. And it gives you the pre-made admin credentials, which we will make sure we want to change. So let's go ahead and go to that link by copying this address and going to our web browser and then pasting that in and pressing enter. Perfect, we're here. So let's go ahead and click secure and then connection secure, more information. And then as you can see, it did actually go ahead and get a certificate for us. So everything works perfect there. Let's go to our terminal and grab our username, paste that in, and then we will grab our generated password and paste that in as well and click next. 
should log us in. We should set up a multi-factor authentication or MFA or 2FA. You guys should go ahead and do that. We're not going to do this for this tutorial, but make sure you guys do this if you guys are actually setting the, the setting this up for production. So go ahead and click skip. It's going to have you change your old password. So let's type in the password and then type in a more secure one. Once that is done, click next. Password has changed successfully. Click next one more time. And now we are in our own self-hosted netbird. So it is very easy to do. As you can see, everything looks awesome. We have our users. We can invite people. We have setup keys, peers. If you guys want to see more about netbird, make sure you guys look at my previous video, which will be in the description below. I will show you guys how to add a quick peer, but I won't go past that for this tutorial. So we're going to click add peer. We'll go ahead and do windows. This one is going to be a little bit different because when you add a peer, when you have a self-hosted netbird, you have to actually add your management URL in the settings for it to actually connect to the right netbird instance, or it'll actually automatically create you an account on the cloud hosted netbird. So we're going to go ahead and click finish here. Should automatically start. And here is where we're going to do settings advanced. And then where it says management URL, we're going to delete this and type in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash netbird dot kugatsu dot cc and let's go ahead and click save and all we have to do now is click connect should open up a browser it's going to ask us to log in so we're going to go grab that email one last time paste that in and then it's asking for the password make sure you type in that new password that we changed it to and press next as you can see the login is successful so we can go to our browser here and right there, we see DOS PC. It is uh, last seen as just now. Your access control, your policies, and all of that to make sure you actually have zero trust and define all of that. So as you can see, we actually are connected here. And then if we want, we can disconnect. Should disconnect fine. And then connect. It should connect to that management URL. And then we're connected again. So that is pretty much how you self-host Netbird. If you guys did enjoy, Please leave a like, comment. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I can always make a follow-up video or answer the best of my abilities in the comments. Or if you guys have any more in-depth questions, please go join my Discord. I will be able to answer quicker and be able to do more in-depth research and helping you guys there. So I hope you guys did enjoy, and I will catch you guys in the next one.